congestion threatened to choke New York City to death. Private entrepreneurs. It was a hugely ambitious project. Against a corrupt political machine. Tweed is furious. They risked everything. Dynamiting led to terrible accidents. Dangerous, noisy, and disruptive. To build one of the largest rapid transit systems on Earth. It was complete chaos for four years. The New York City subway. I'm Stuart Varney, and this is American Built. The New York City subway at rush hour. New Yorkers love to complain about it, but they depend on it. It's the central nervous system of the city that never sleeps. More than four million people ride it every day. But building it, well, that's another story. After the Civil War, waves of immigrants poured into New York. It was some of the worst crowding the world had ever seen. New York City had a huge traffic problem. The streets are just jammed. And everybody's going everywhere. It becomes an incredible, tangled mess. And it wasn't just people. Something like 10 to 12,000 horses pulling wagons, what were called omnibuses, which were basically local stagecoaches. They are running on very ragged streets and very bumpy, often very crowded. The business classes were worried that the city would just strangle it in its own traffic and that it would lose out to Philadelphia and Boston, that New York would just become impossible to operate in. There's just chaos and it is very, very slow. To try to move things along, the city built horse railways. They were basically drays running on rails. The horse railways go faster, but there is just pandemonium in the streets. Pandemonium wasn't the only thing in the streets. New York has a poop problem. An enormous number of animals and an enormous amount of manure along with them. Three and a half million pounds of manure every day, enough to cover an entire football field two and a half feet deep. And that's just out there in the open, so city stank. <laughs> it was clear that New York needed a new kind of transportation system. But what? In 1863, a man named Hugh B. Wilson comes up with a plan to build an underground railway in New York City. Wilson was a businessman who visited London and saw the first London rapid transit system, which was partly underground. Wilson raised $5 million in private funds to build a subway in New York. Unfortunately, he fell headfirst into the political cesspool. The city was largely controlled by the Tammany Hall. And Tammany Hall and Boss Tweed, who was the de facto leader of it, were enormously corrupt. Boss Tweed happened to be making a fortune on horse railroads, so Wilson's plan was dead on arrival. William Morrissey Tweed makes sure that it doesn't get through the legislature. Still, it wasn't just Tweed's opposition that killed Wilson's plan. New Yorkers weren't wild about building a London-style subway. Bringing like a steam-powered railroad underground creates a lot of problems. Steam locomotives vomited cinders. They vomited ashes. If you're underground, that's a real problem. Another New York entrepreneur thought he had a solution for that, Alfred Beach. He would be like a Silicon Valley figure today. He was a champion of all forms of new technology. But he's also an inventor. He invents a typewriter for the blind. And he came up with an idea for an air-propelled subway car. Beach's idea is you could use air pressure. You could use the technology of a pneumatic tube to blow or suck the movement of a rail car along rail lines. Beach planned to build a 50-ton underground fan called the Western Tornado. It would blow a train car 300 feet through a tunnel. At the end, the car would trip a telegraph wire that would send a signal back to the engineer who would reverse the fan. Beach's tube was basically like putting a pea in a straw and then blowing it on one end. And this is his great breakthrough but he knows he's going to have trouble getting permission to do this, so he comes up with a subterranean scheme. 
Beach finagled a license to build a tube beneath City Hall, just for mail. He didn't say how wide he would make that tube. And he dug on Broadway right next to City Hall, right under the eyes of Tammany Hall. His subterranean subterfuge couldn't last long, so the inventor created a hydraulic tunneling shield. The hydraulic shield was used to protect the workers from falling rock. And the second thing it was designed to do was to hasten the digging. Tunneling this way, you created a tube, and then you could line the tube with concrete and end up with a stable tunnel fairly quickly. Workers dug in total secrecy just below City Hall for two months. Hidden in plain sight, people know he's tunneling, but they think that he's tunneling for little tubes. He builds an entire just two-stop railroad. They open this, and lo and behold, Beach has come up with a demonstration subway. The outfittings of this was especially striking. Beach spared no expense to make his low-level train the height of luxury. There was a grand piano in the lobby. There were chandeliers. There was a fish tank. And the actual cars, it was like a first-class railroad car. It's got upholstered furniture. It's really glorious, and people are fascinated. 100,000 New Yorkers flocked to ride the wind-blown luxury car, but one of them was not having it. Tweed is furious. 